Well, hi, uh, good morning and welcome to uh, the morning service at St. James's Church in Bream. And uh, my name's Barry and I'm uh, a member of the church, uh, also part of the leadership team. And uh, I run a project for the church as well called Caleb's Mountain, which I'm going to mention in a little while. Um, today, uh, Chris Arvika is going to be giving the talk. And this week, wrapping up uh, our course, uh, sharing ab about sharing our faith. And in this final week, we'll be hearing about commission. And then uh, Sue Newbit and Josie Pembry will be giving the Bible readings. And Scylla Marchant will be offering our intercessory prayers. So uh, today is the first day of Advent. Um, so uh, we have an absence of children. So we're going to have the very grown up Reverend Christopher McClay come and light the first candle for Advent. Can I start? Yeah, of course. So um, thank you, Barry. Only my mother calls me Christopher. Uh, but we'll, we'll live with that. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, I just always do a little bit of an explanation about the Advent wreath. There's lots of churches have, don't do Advent wreaths. Uh, but I was kind of brought up in a church where you have an Advent wreath because that kind of explains uh, something about the whole story of Jesus and it helps us to anticipate Christmas. Um, if you have got an Advent calendar, uh, it's, not, it's not proper because Advent is the four weeks, the four starts on the fourth Sunday before Christmas. Whereas Advent calendars tend to start on the 1st of December, which is not always the same thing. So if you've already eaten some chocolate out of your Advent calendar, you're a bit ahead of yourself. Uh, anyway, we tell the story of the, of the Bible, tell the story of God through the Advent wreath. So through the weeks, we develop the story. So we're going to start by lighting the first candle. Um, it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, and uh, this is to represent what we call the patriarchs, which are kind of the, if you like, the old men of the Bible, the, the people who come right at the beginning of the Bible, and they're the kind of fathers of faith. So people like Moses and Abraham, Joshua, others like that. Um, and it's to remind us that actually uh, the story of Jesus didn't just suddenly start with Jesus. Uh, the story of God didn't suddenly start with Jesus in the New Testament. This is something that's been going on from the beginning of time uh, and God's plan to bring us back to himself uh, has been going on a lot earlier uh, than Jesus. So in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll look at the whole progression through that. So I'm just going to light this candle. I'm sorry that that was a little dull. Uh, we normally have the excitement of a child potentially setting fire to their own sleeves. Um, let's just pray uh, as, I, as we remember that. So, Father, thank you so much for those who have gone before us, who started uh, the story, if you like, at the beginning of, uh, of time, at the beginning of the Bible story. Thank you that you have always planned to restore us to yourself and that Jesus was simply the, the climax of that story. So as we look back, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank, thank you, Chris. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, one of the things I think about sharing faith is getting our heads into the right place. So I thought we'd start again with a psalm uh, from the message, which is a version of the Bible. And I'm going to read uh, Psalm 98. Sing to God a brand new song. He's made a world of wonders. He rolled up his sleeves. He set things right. God made history with salvation. He showed the world what he could do. He remembered to love us, a bonus. 
to his dear family Israel, indefatigable love. The whole earth comes to attention. Look, God's work of salvation. Shout your praises to God, everybody. Let loose and sing. Strike up the band. Round up an orchestra to play for God. Add on a hundred voice choir. Feature trumpets and big trombones. Fill the air with praises to King God. Let the sea and its fish give a round of applause with everything living on earth joining in. Let ocean breakers call out encore and mountains harmonize the finale. A tribute to God when he comes, when he comes to set the earth right. He'll straighten out the world. He'll put the world right and everyone in it. The psalmist there sounds like a coiled spring which has been released, unleashing all that enthusiasm for God. There are days when my faith is like that. But there's also days, weeks, sometimes months, when I do not feel like this. And it'd be foolish, I'd be foolish, wouldn't I, to not recognise that these ups and downs impact the way that I think and talk about Jesus. It was Susie who commented to me the other day how she'd noticed since the latest lockdown she had taken a car journey which took her across the borders into Wales and then back into England, back and forth, a couple of times. One minute under the laws and restrictions of one governing power, next minute under the rules and guidelines of another. Intrinsically, though, nothing inside the vehicle she was travelling in changed as she crossed each border. So just hold that thought. Five years ago, I took the name Caleb's Mountain for the project I set up and worked for. It was a bit audacious, really, attempting to recapture Caleb from the Bible's wholehearted desire to cross the border into the land and the inheritance which was promised to him and the people of God. I have to say that this year has felt more like Susie's car journey. More like the car journey than a triumphant and significant crossing of the River Jordan. A spiritual meandering in and out of promise. Wondering sometimes whether I'd made a huge mistake about the project. I was still able to celebrate victories. But it felt sometimes like it was battle after battle. But lately, I've looked at the book of Joshua. As the chosen people entered the promised land, after 40 years, they still had to face battles. 13, precisely, over a period of about seven years. And even for them, after the, the Jericho battle, after that huge rush of excitement they got from following God's instructions, they managed to forget it was their God who'd given them victory. And they used human judgment. Result, they lost the first battle of AI. Whether it's a battle campaign to fight for AI or against the Amorites, a project or uh, needing a clarity of strategy or a church vision for sharing our faith, we need to be in the right place with God. We need to look up, allow God to be God. We need to be praying, fasting, worshipping, recognising our feelings affect our relationship with him and our performance for him. So as we approach the confession, it wouldn't do any harm to reflect on the time we've tried to do things our way, in our own strength. And all the other things that maybe we 
we could have done, should have done, but failed to do. So let's move in to the confession. Lord God, we sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew us a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's join the sea and the fish in giving God a round of applause and we'll go, uh, as we go to worship with garments of praise. Dance again. Wet the 
with this dry and thirsty land With a river Lord, our eyes are fixed on you And we are waiting For your garland of grace As we praise your name Put on the garments of praise For the spirit of heaviness Let the oil of gladness flow down from garments of praise for the spirit of happiness your joy is my strength alone my strength alone make these broken weary bones rise to dance again Wet this dry and thirsty land With a river Lord, our eyes are fixed on you And we're waiting For your garland of grace As we praise you First reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, starting to read at verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second Bible reading is taken from uh, the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and beginning to read at the first verse. The heading in the Bible says, The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, the believers were all together in one place. 
Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard, heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? How then is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So um, let's uh, let's pray as we think about these passages and and the subject uh, of the chapter. So Lord, we are in your hands, and we just ask that you would speak to us, uh, give us those things that each of us need to hear uh, in our in our own situations, our own places, our own lives. Uh, would you speak to us through your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name? Amen. So, um, <clears throat> as Barry said, uh, it's Advent Sunday, and that is the beginning of the church year. Happy New Year. Um, and if you've got uh, if you're a good, good Anglican and you've got a prayer book, uh, then we, we have to turn back to the beginning uh, this Sunday, um, which is always, always a little bit confusing. Um, we turn back to the beginning because it's the first week of the church year. But we uh, today uh, in Bream are ending, we're starting the year by ending our Mission Shaped Living study, uh, which is the study that we've been going through with the, the different uh, COG groups and, and so on. Um, and I imagine if you're, the different COGs are at a completely different places. So some will probably have only got about halfway through the course. Some, uh, some are so efficient that I think they've got to this Sunday before I even I've got to this Sunday um, so we're in all in different places but so is Advent Sunday a bit of a funny time to finish this course um, and is it basically a little bit strange that we've been studying telling others about Jesus at a time when <laughs> we've been stifled by face masks and by physical distancing I know in our cog that we've been meeting uh, on the internet, um, uh, you know, we've struggled with the idea of how, how can you share your faith with your colleagues at work uh, when you're sat in your kitchen um, all week working off the kitchen table. Uh, it's quite a, quite a challenge. So we'll come back to that, I hope, at some stage. So in the passage that has held the whole course together, which is we haven't had read this morning, is Luke 10, where Jesus sends out the 72. 
um, he sends them out in pairs ahead of him and we've looked at how that shows that he has confidence in us and we can have confidence in him uh, and so on but as he sends them out he essentially says off you go there's a big harvest out there ask the lord of the harvest which must be god uh, to send out workers so he's kind of saying there's a massive harvest out there but we need more people to be involved with it and now today our first reading uh, was from the parable of the sower uh, and it's quite a long passage so quite often we split it up so we, we talk about the parable of the sower and then the disciples had very little idea what Jesus was talking about uh, actually I think when I read the parable of the sower I, I, my mind starts to turn slightly as well um, so then Jesus goes on and exceptionally because uh, he doesn't often explain his parables but exceptionally he did uh, explain this one and so we've got that if you bring those two passages together we've got the sowing of seeds and we've got Jesus saying um, the harvest is is plentiful so most of us will 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 know that it's that picture of somebody going into the fields where perhaps they've they've already prepared the soil and they've got a bag of seed on their shoulder and they're just taking handfuls and they're throwing out the seed and the seed some of it lands in those beautifully prepared furrows some of it hits gravel hits rock goes to where the weeds will grow um, and so on it's not greenhouse growing where I handle every individual seed some of them still don't come up but it's not where I put an individual seed into a little pot and then put it under a nice warm cover and hope that it will come up and hope also that I will remember to water it no this is <clears throat> a bit like when we excuse me <clears throat> a bit like when we arrived uh, in Bream and uh, some of you will know we, we moved to a new house uh, and there was quite a lot of mud around and we have three dogs who are very efficient carriers of mud into the house uh, so I bought on the internet a 20 kilo sack of grass seed and so I went down my drive having slight I'm not very good at soil preparation I did rake it over throw it out and then raked it over again and also actually when we ran, when we finished the church center I went up to the car park above the car park and threw out the rest of my grass seed um, in the full knowledge that some pesky birds will come along and nick some of my seeds Jesus didn't talk about the seeds so the, the birds so much they are mentioned um, in the full knowledge that it might not rain at the right moment in the full knowledge that brambles and weeds may come and cover it up or in my case moss in the full knowledge that the soil that I've prepared may not be particularly good soil may not be suited to those seeds we took seeds to I I took some nice seeds to Nigeria when we went to live there discovered they don't they don't like Nigerian soil so they never grew um, but also in the full knowledge that some of those seeds will take root and will last and hopefully will spread um, so now I have grass all the way up our driveway well and some moss uh, where there was once mud we have grass at the top of the church car park where there was once mud and none of those seeds were individually planted they were just scattered so not all the seeds will grow not all the seeds will survive but some do so so what can we learn from that and I I was just sort of preparing this and I thought well actually the main thing that I learned from that is that the seeds that I've got in my house on my shelf don't grow um, Jesus didn't say that um, but the parable of the sower only has some relevance if we've done some sowing you can't say I've got all these seeds in my house and they're just not growing uh, because they're in a packet and they're sat on the shelf so that's not going to help is it so 
we don't even get into the percentages game if we don't sow the seeds. Um, I can tell you the seeds on my shelf, 100% of them will not grow and we will not see fruit. So if we want to see fruit, they've got to get out of the packet somehow and onto the ground. And I think the picture of a, a sower in, in Jesus's parable is of a reckless dispersal of seeds. You're throwing them out knowing that not all of them are going to bear fruit. It's risky, if you like. So, whoa, why did I waste all my effort on that seed? And he did nothing. Uh, but actually, it's a kind of risky and reckless dispersal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our job. Luke 10 talks about harvesting, but there is no harvesting without sowing. And I think we all know that. So all of us, yes, all of us need to be, I think, reckless sowers. I think most of us are not reckless sowers, but are very careful greenhouse growers. And we perhaps put all our effort into one seed or perhaps two seeds, and we do our best to create the perfect environment for them to grow. And it all becomes a bit personal and a bit private and perhaps not very risky. And the trouble is, if you look, if you kind of unpack Jesus's parable there and look in terms of percentages, um, just planting two seeds is not giving me a very good percentage chance, if you like, of success. And mostly we don't know, if we throw the seeds out, we don't know which seeds are going to bear fruit. Um, so we're doing, we're tending to be greenhouse growers, but I think we need to be more risky, more reckless growers. Um, so I'm really encouraging us to tell loads and loads of people about Jesus. Because somewhere along the line, there will be fruit. There will be huge wastage, but there will also be fruit. And in percentage terms, ultimately, when one or two seeds bear fruit, Jesus says they'll bear 30, 60, 100 times what was put into the ground. So that means, in a sense, we can uh, lose a huge quantity uh, of seed before we, we're actually in the negative. I've, there was, I'm trying to wrap my brains. There was uh, some wildlife program we were watching, Louise and I, just for a few minutes the other day, and some crazy figure about how only like one in 240,000 of these tiny creatures is likely to make it through to maturity and yet the that race of creatures is still uh is still going um so we all need to be reckless sowers and i i would dare to say that actually every single i i some people are going to get back to me on this, but I would say that every single person who knows you, who knows me, needs to know that I'm a Christian. Uh, because that, <clears throat> that's a little bit reckless, isn't it? It's just making sure that everybody knows that we are trying to tell them about Jesus. doesn't mean we have to be obnoxious, uh, but we do need to tell them uh, about Jesus. We need to sow the seeds in one way or another. <clears throat> I don't think there is a call for undercover Christians in this country. Um, we're not going to get arrested for being Christians, so we do need to tell people. Um, and I just want to say b b before I move on, that so let's not be discouraged. This, this parable is really clear that there will be a massive wastage, that, that we'll be throwing out seeds, we'll be telling people about Jesus, and there'll be loads and loads and loads of people, as you know, who will not respond to that. That's not our problem. Our problem, our, our job is to be the sowers. It's not our, prob our job to um, make those, those seeds grow. That is God's, uh, that's God's work. So it can be very discouraging, but I would just say don't be discouraged. It's well worth sowing because where something does take root, the fruit uh, will be uh, multiplied. And uh, no, 
that's fine. So, uh, and I would just say that that there are other things that we will do as a church. Uh, uh, We'll do things as individuals, but as a church, we'll also do things. So we'll lay on courses, we'll lay on uh, different events. So there are different ways that people can uh, be told about Jesus. So like in the new year, I'm hoping that online we'll do... um, we'll run a happiness lab so we can get people to join in with that that that's another way of just gently telling people uh through kind of christian wisdom worldly wisdom but also helping people to see things in the spiritual um in this i will tell you uh during the notices um but we're going to put out little clips on facebook every day of advent hopefully just something there will will be a, a seed landing uh, in somebody's uh, faith, if you like. Hopefully next year, we'll be doing some prayer walking uh, around the community. And again, that hopefully that will be part of us spreading uh, and sowing seeds. So I just want, I'm going to move on in a minute, but I, I just want to make sure we don't think that sowing seeds is a way that we... Um, we kind of earn God's favor. We don't, we're not doing this because we want to earn God's favor. We're doing this because we respond to God's love and favor. So because God has loved us, we become uh, sowers. But the second half of what I want to say this morning is less about that commissioning that comes in the, in the manual um, and more, uh, well, I just want to focus a little differently the, but it's still relevant to the course. So the more that we studied the course, the more we considered the struggle to tell others, the more we thought of those frustrations and how we are frustrated that we see so little fruit, the more I realized it's got to be about the Holy Spirit. So uh, I I remember a long time ago when uh, in my, the first parish we were in, we had this amazing uh, Alpha course where we invited, uh, and if anybody knows about Alpha, you will know that these are amazing figures. We invited something like 100 people to a sort of introductory supper. And 60 of those people said yes and came to this introductory supper. That's an amazing percentage. And 40 of those 60 signed up and joined the Alpha course. And we had a fantastic Alpha course. And I don't know, maybe one or two came to the church by the end of it. That was quite discouraging. Uh, We learned a lot of lessons from it. But if we were doing it in our own strength, that would be hugely frustrating. But if we're doing it in the strength of the Holy Spirit, then we surrender those things to God. But we also need to be open to the spirit because <clears throat> we're talking about moving people from death to life from one kingdom to another kingdom from one like Barry was saying from one uh one country to another in a sense so we can't do that it's not our business uh, it's only god that can bring life out of death <clears throat> but he chooses us us as his friends and co-workers So we need two things, which I think are pretty much the same thing. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit, and we need Jesus. Otherwise, we're just trying to do it on our own. And maybe this is where we come back to the first Sunday of Advent, or where we come back to COVID distancing and so on. We need Jesus. It is all about Jesus. Although Jesus loves us doing things for him, I don't think he values that if it masks or if it obliterates our relationship with him. Our relationship with Jesus must come first. So, um, you know, we're called to love God with every inch, every atom of who we are, not just to serve him. So we need to be with Jesus every minute of the day we need to be full and open full of the holy spirit open to the holy spirit i sort of wrote this down i wonder if this is right but i said i wonder sometimes if jesus walked past me 
on the road. I know this is a stupid illustration, but if Jesus walked past me on the other side of the road as I was going down Bream High Street, whether I would recognize him. I, obviously, if he was wearing a white bathrobe with a blue sash, I probably would. But if, if Jesus was just looking like anybody else, would I recognize him? Or have I become so busy doing things for him that actually my relationship with him is not so great? Because it is well possible to be so busy doing things for God that we don't have a relationship with God. So I'm just really, I suppose, let, let me come into land. So I'm just inviting us this Advent to read, read the story of the Bible, fantastic. To pray, fantastic. But we can read and we can pray without being with God. And we're called to be with God. You know, the vine, the, the parable, the story of the vine talks about uh, abide in me, remain in me. Uh, and we can pray at God without spending time with God. So we need to learn to listen to him. So when we, if we have a, a daily quiet time uh, or if we're managing to, to be aware of God throughout the day, let's not just be always doing all the talking or all the acting. Uh, we need to l allow God to speak to us. We need to be in his presence. And that's hugely important for our, my relationship with God, but that's also hugely important for our sharing our faith with others. Because if we're starting from a point of doing it in our own strength, then obviously we're going to get frustrated. Obviously we're going to get some, what's wrong with you seed? Why haven't you grown? You load of rubbish. Well, it's not our problem. It's God who's going to do that. So I just encourage you in this Advent time, yeah, tell people about Jesus, but tell people out of that place of knowing Jesus, of knowing God in our lives. Make sure that we're not just telling people about a theory that we have or a, a, an understanding we have. Make sure it comes from a relationship that we have. I'm just going to uh, use a, a, a prayer to uh, finish what I'm saying and then we'll go uh, straight into uh, a familiar song just to kind of anchor that in what we're thinking. So let's pray. Christ, as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ, as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within me and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me, this day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful, Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. Amen. So let's just respond to that as we sing together. Yeah. 
words dear lord is hear us we pray lord god we come before you to thank and praise you for answered prayers for blessings and all your mercies and to glorify you lord of lords and king of kings creator and sustainer of all things thank you that you are our father dear lord Hear us, we pray. Sovereign Lord, we thank you that you love all you have created and that you long for a relationship with each one of us. Help us, Lord, to know you better and to grow ever more like your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet and to demonstrate your love through our actions and words. Lord, help us never to be afraid but to bring your light into the dark places in this world. Dear Lord, hear us, we pray. Father, please guide the team organising the Christmas boxes to support families in receipt of free school meals. Help us to be generous in support of this scheme. As we, as we prepare to celebrate the day of your birth, help us to be mindful of those among us who struggle at this time due to painful memories and severe financial struggles. We pray for those who have lost jobs and businesses because of the virus and other difficulties. Lord, bless the food banks 
crisis and other charities who bring relief to those in, in dire need. Dear Lord, hear us, we pray. Lord, we pray for the Queen. Thank you for her long reign over us and that she loves and serves you. We pray for our government, that you would give them wisdom, compassion and integrity and guide them through the many challenges ahead. We also pray for the smooth transfer of the administration in the United States. We pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as they prepare to take office. May they reunite the people of that country. Dear Lord, hear us, we pray. Lord, we bring before you Hans and Jane in the Czech Republic and pray for the success of their mission there. We also think of Sandy and Martin. Lord, protect them where they are from Islamic extremism and keep them safe in all they do. Locally, we pray for the Reverend David Gardiner and Nina Summerfield of St Mary's Church, that you will bless them in their mission to Lydney. Dear Lord, hear us, we pray. We bring before you all those who are distressed or unwell and those awaiting surgery. May they know your peace, healing and loving presence at this time. Lord, accept these prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We want God to be our all and everything. He is our all and everything. But sometimes more than anything else, I just want him to be my vision. Of heaven, my 
my treasure thou art of heaven thanks that's such a, a great song isn't it be thou my vision and and thank you to chris for the the word that he's given and uh, it just reminded me a little bit doesn't fit perfectly but there's an advert at the minute uh, where a guy says he's recently decided to stop attending his yoga class uh, and do it at home and he says that there's two advantages for this uh, one is that he doesn't have to pay for it and secondly he doesn't have to do it so let's not make this true of our reckless faith sharing our changed experience of communion doesn't lead, need lessen the need sorry uh, for workers to sow. Uh, so uh, before I give a, a final uh, little bit, I think uh, Chris is going to come up and, and give some notices. Thanks, Barry. I was just thinking about actually our um, our, our vision banner. Uh, it's not by accident that we have that um, dandelion head with the seeds being blown uh, on it. So that that's all part of uh, what we think we're doing. Uh, I just want to do a couple of notices just so we know uh, where we're going. Please bear with us, um, because as you know, uh, if we try to announce anything, the goalposts can be moved frequently. Uh, so all of what I say now, um, I say with great confidence, but. Um, so just just what I referred to in my, my talk was that um, we're going to... Uh, put up a little two minutes maximum film clip every day in Advent uh, on the church Facebook page. Um, and actually there were a little four line poem as well uh, every day. Um, and so those of you who are not on Facebook like me, uh, it will also go up on the um, church website. But it's not completely aimed at church people it's aimed at everybody else really so if you go oh come on give us a bit more theology i go it's not for you uh but it'd be great if you rejoiced in it and and shared it with others uh so that that'll be going on um and i think there'll be there's something up even today um secondly uh i'm aware that you don't know what's going on with christmas services um that's because it's not exactly nailed down, but we will nail it down this week um, as, well, as long as we um, don't get nailed down in a different way. Um, and the third is kind of connected with that, but actually, as far as I understand it, the new rules say that if you're outside in a church service, you can sing. may have to sing with a mask on, uh, but we can sing. So we're thinking like next week, Sunday, why don't we have an evening service, which is basically a time of worship. So for those people who have been desperate to get together and worship together, you can come to the church centre uh, and we will have a kind of mixed economy where uh, the, the band uh, will be probably inside to keep their fingers warm. Um, but the windows will be open with some speakers. So those of us who want to sing outside will be physically distanced, but outside. Those of us who want to be warm, but uh, realize they can't sing, could be inside and enjoy the, the worship without singing along. Um, so we're just going to give that a whirl, see what happens. And uh, probably a couple of weeks later, we're going to have a, a kind of fairly brief carol service again in the car park. Um, and, and again, perhaps if people need to stay warm, uh, they can be inside but not singing. So th those are the things uh, that are coming up. And I'm aware that there is one other notice that I need to give, but I've no idea what it is. Thank you, uh, Chris, especially for that last notice. Um, so I'm going to finish now with one more thought, uh, and, and then I'll finish in prayer. Uh, and this, uh, talking about Facebook, this is something that a friend of 
an old friend of mine um, from when I was studying youth work at Oasis posted uh, this week. And it's by um, Bishop Ken Untena of Saginaw. Uh, but it's often attributed to Oscar Romero. But, uh, so I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, I found it very helpful. It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it's beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise of God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realising that. This enables us to do something and do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for God's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. Father, I just pray that we can embrace this idea that we can play a small part, but an important part through your blessing, through our relationship with you and through the Holy Spirit, Lord. I just pray that you would bless us as a church, bless this community as we go out and sow seed. In Jesus' name, amen.